Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the channel. We have lots to cover today. We're going to be talking about the giant statues that they are proposing around the world. We're also going to be covering a new, I guess you can call it suggestion. It's not a mandate yet, but it's there are guidelines that are basically telling people that if you already got the sticker that you should not go get a test. But then on the other side of their mouth, they're saying, that people that already got the sticker are testing positive. So we're going to break all that down. We're also going to give you a sneak peek on part three of Manifest. We had a pretty tremendous new, I guess you can call it a revelation. And so we're going to cover part of that. We'll do a full show on Manifest tomorrow. But I will give you guys a sneak peek on it. We also have... Lots and lots of headlines to go over this morning. So uh, the first thing I wanted to show you guys, this is funny. Because these people are crazy. Look at this. Now they're called suitings instead of... <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Who is, you know, fact-checking the fact-checkers, so to speak? I don't know, but these are called suitings now. People that wear suits. I don't know. Now, some of you had sent me this. Actually, I think one of you sent me this. This is an update on every state and their status when it comes to pending legislation pertaining to employer mandated VACA nations. And so I thought this was pretty interesting because it shows every single state here. Now, if you want me to look and see what your state is doing in terms of employers mandating the sticker. Uh, put that in the chat. I'll be there in a second. But I wanted to go over two states that are actually in favor of the employees in trying to stop employers from mandating the sticker. Now, there have been no laws passed yet, but they're in discussions about this. Connecticut, amazingly is one such state this is pending legislation let me pull this up so you can see this it says here uh senate bill 568 would eliminate not the non-medical exemption oh wait here we go down here sorry uh house bill 6269 would prohibit employers including licensed health care facilities from taking adverse actions against employees and applicants who decline to get the sticker. So that's pretty important. But then if you look at some of these other bills that they're looking at, they seem to go in the opposite direction. Would expand exemptions to mandatory sticker laws for school-aged children. Okay, so that's a good bill. This bill, Senate Bill 568, would eliminate non-medical exemption to the immunization requirements for students grade grades pre-k through 12 attending public or private schools so this would eliminate the non-medical exemption so connecticut there's the update on that this bill the bill that prohibits employers from including uh, from taking adverse action against employees who don't want the sticker is been referred to the Joint Committee on Labor and Public Relations on January 29th. So it's been a while since we've heard an update on this. So if you live in Connecticut, you might want to call these this committee, Joint Committee on Labor and Public Employees, and say, hey, what's going on with this bill? It needs to be passed because as, it's, as it sits now, the case precedent is that they can force this on people. Now, Missouri is the only other state that has pending legislation that is trying to protect employees from having to get the sticker. Uh, it says here, House Bill 838 in Missouri, prohibit any public employer from requiring any public employee to receive a Sticker would also prohibit a political subdivision from adapt, adopting any ordinance, rule, or regulation requiring a public employer to implement a policy mandating stickers for public employees. Bill was referred to the Committee 
on April 7th. So this got referred a little bit later than the other one, but it's still sitting in a committee. So if you live in Missouri, uh, ask them about House Bill 838 and say, hey, look, this needs to be pushed through. This needs to be approved. Now, all these other states, nothing. Now, I'm going to go in here into the chat and see which states you guys want me to look up. I just saw Texas, so I'm going to go back here and look up Texas. Now, this is important because something is being talked about at least, and this could be smoke and mirrors, but at the end of the day, it's something. So here's what's going on in Texas. House Bill 1687 would prohibit employment discrimination based on the status, okay? So under the bill, an employer commits an unlawful employment practice if they fire, fail to hire, or otherwise discriminate against an unvc'd individual okay so this is a pretty strong bill here because they can't fire you for not getting it so that's pretty good too it's worded a little different but it's pretty good now this bill was referred to their committee on march 9th 2021 so all seems like most of these bills are in committee let's do two more states and then we'll move on with the show Maine has a proposal for mandating the sticker for five years. Arizona, Pennsylvania. Let's check those two. Arizona. Pending legislation. What are they talking about? Prohibiting individuals from requiring persons to receive, be administered, or take, disclose whether they have received the sticker as a condition of employment. As a condition of employment. Okay. Okay. So this one was referred to committee as well. So it seems like a lot of states have these in committees. This language isn't as strong, it seems. It almost seems as if, what about if the person is already working there? This is saying a condition of employment. So. If you're already working there, this I don't know if this law would apply. Someone asked about Pennsylvania. Here's what's going on in Pennsylvania. Would prohibit employers from discharging, refusing to hire, threatening, or otherwise discriminating or retaliating against current or prospective employees who refuse to participate in the program. In the sticker or an invasive medical test required by the employer. All right, so it seems as though Pennsylvania has some pretty strong wording in their bill. It was referred to committee on January 26th. Seemed like a lot of this popped off like Jan in January, but they're still sitting in committee. All right, let's check two more. <laughs> Pennsylvania, you T. Kerr says. Minnesota. Let's, let's do Minnesota and Michigan, then we'll go on with the show. I'll link this so you could check for yourself. Uh, yeah, I'll put it right here. There you go. So now you guys have it. But we'll look at Minnesota. And what was the other one? Okay, let's take a look. Minnesota. Michigan prohibit VC administration without written consent of the person receiving um, an individual's decision not to receive the sticker is an impermissible base is an impermissible basis to deny them the ability to engage in commerce bar government and businesses operating in the state from discriminating against an individual based on immunization status. Violations could, could carry a felony charge. Okay, this is in committee in December 14th, 2020. Wow, it was right after. So this is in committee as well. So, laws are confusing to me. Michigan, what is Michigan saying? The informed consent in the workplace would prohibit employers from discriminating against individuals based on 
because they have not received or have refused certain stickers, including CV-19. Okay, so this is saying they cannot fire them. This one is in committee as well. March 23rd, 2021. So it looks like there are several states that have this bill in committee. I don't know how this is going to work itself out, but we will keep you guys posted on that. So I put the link to this in the chat so you guys can see this. Now, let's get on to some of these other stories because the manipulation is continuing. And now they're telling people who already got the sticker not to get tested, even if they feel like they may have caught it again. Now, can you see how this could skew, possibly skew, the number of people that are reported what they call breakthrough CV-19? I can imagine that it would, because if they're telling people as a guideline not to go get the test, then this will be the result. You'll have less reports. Here's the story here. Now the tens of millions of Americans got the sticker. Many are wondering, do I have enough antibodies to keep me safe? For the vast majority of the people, the answer is yes. That has not stopped hordes from stampeding to the local dock in the box for testing. But to get a reliable answer, Stickered people have to get a specific kind of test and at the right time. Take the test too soon or rely on what looks uh, or that looks for the wrong antibodies. All too easy to do given the befuddling array of tests now available. Okay, so here's the smoke screen. Oh, you might have not you might not have gotten the right test. Right? And it says here scientists would actually prefer that the average stickered person not get antibody testing at all on the grounds that it is unnecessary in the trials the stickered authorized in the u.s provoked a strong antibody response in virtually all of the participants most people shouldn't even be worrying about this so they're telling people not to go get an antibody test which in my opinion means that there will be cases that we're never you'll never know about. Look at this story. 4,000 fully stickered people in Massachusetts have tested positive. These are what they call breakthrough cases. Nearly 4,000 fully stickered people in Massachusetts have tested positive for CV-19. The number of breakthrough cases in the state has been infrequent so far, accounting for approximately... One in 1,000. As of June 12th, there were that many cases and da-da-da-da. So they're now saying that there are breakthrough cases. Now, when I say that you can catch it again, I'm not talking about the it they're talking about. Okay? Because I'm talking about the hyped-up Fear Factory CV-19 that they're talking about, okay? We know what this probably is. And we know that this has been going on for decades and decades and decades every season, right? Now, let's read this next article. Because now they're saying that this is going to come back every year. The fall surge. Models predict U.S. CV could surge this fall if the rates lag. If the VC sticker rates lag. They're calling it the Delta variant. So, they're getting us prepped and primed to basically get ready to lose our fall again. Now, this Gottlieb character, that rings a bell. Scott Gottlieb. I think this was Trump's appointment. Oh, yeah. He's the former um, FDA guy. Now, we warned about Scott uh, Scott Gottlieb uh, about last year, I'm thinking. Do you guys remember that video where we told you that this guy wanted to force 
stickers. Remember that? Well, here he is again in this article talking about the sticker. And remember I said, you guys, uh, this is the shape of things to come. If the T-Man appointed this guy and he's got a track record for forcing stickers, um, that tells you everything you need to know. Now, he's not the, the Food and Drug Administration chief anymore, but he's giving his opinion here in this article. So, this is the shape of things to come. And we knew it from the beginning, but unfortunately now here we are. Now, let's get into some of these other stories. The Delta variant. I think we already covered that one. So, Izzy to the real is saying that they're having a surge as well amongst the already stickered people. So, this is what's going on. So now they've got everybody in fear. Okay, even though everybody was promised that if you got the sticker, they shouldn't be afraid of anything. But they're walking around afraid. Barely into summer and they're already pumping up the fall fear. And we knew this was going to happen as well. And I don't know if you guys are hearing this in your family circles, family and friends, but the people that have already gotten stickered are now, they're even more afraid than when this all started. They're afraid of you who doesn't have a sticker. They're saying to you, oh, you need to go get this right away. There's more fear now than before they got the sticker. And what's next? Are they going to start saying that unstickered people are driving the variants now? Is that going to be what they're going to say next? There's something in the air, and I don't know what it is, but I'm feeling intense pressure from people that already got the sticker who are still afraid. Now, let's get into this next article. Now, remember Duterte? Everybody was like, wow, man, this guy's a truther. He's our hero. He stood up against the U.S. And remember... I told you guys, it's always smoke and mirrors with these people. It's all a pretend game. They like to pretend to oppose one another and act tough. And it gives the illusion that the United States is benevolent and fair. Look what he's doing now. And this is the true indication of a person's character when it comes to stickers. He is now telling Filipinos, you choose. Either you get the sticker or you go to jail. In his own words. So there you go. God help the people that live in the Philippines. Because this is what they're dealing with. Anyone living on an island right now. Is pretty much screwed. Because. They're at the mercy of the fear factory. At it's height. Which is. We're on an island. And we have to do. What's necessary to protect our citizens. So. I'll pin this article as well. Duterte, very disappointing. Very disappointing. I'm sure there's money involved. So, let me check in with you guys and we'll get into the Giants. Thanks everybody for showing up this morning. Now, many of you asked me to break down this giant statue. The giant statues. And we're going to do that right now. Now, the first thing that I noticed before we get into some of these articles is that there are 21 statues that they're proposing. They're 112 feet tall. So you notice that number 2112, 21 statues, 112 feet tall. And of course, they want to erect these statues in 2021. There's another 21. So what's up with the number 21? Well, 1221, which is a mirror of the number 21, December 21st, is an ode to the winter solstice, which is the darkest day of the year. Essentially, it's Apollo's birthday. So here we go, right back to Apollo worship. And I believe that giants, obviously, are the offspring of the fallen angels. Let's read into some of these articles and see if we can find some more clues on this proposed giant statues. 
it says here, get a first look at the giant statue coming to 21 cities across the globe. The 10-story public art display will showcase the giants in communities across the globe using technology to celebrate humanity. It says here, the most exciting visitor attraction concept of the 21st century has been launched, entitled The Giant. It features the world's tallest moving statue. So this thing has arms that move. Probably, I think the head moves as well. 112 feet tall, 35 meters. It was conceived by the Giant Company based in Dublin, Ireland. The idea was initially inspired by Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. Supported by Enterprise Ireland and CRBRE, the concept for the Giant includes the multi-story statue Mounted on a plinth, housing an ex exhibition, the statue will be embedded with millions of addressable LED pixels, giving it the ability to instantly take the form of any person, from historical figures such as Albert Einstein's or famous women, Amelia Earhart, to stars of today from Lionel Messi to Beyonce. Each hour, the giant will transform into each country's national heroes and celebrities. The giant's arms and head can move to diversify, oh, to a diversity of positions and images of the men and women appearing on the statue can speak or sing. Well, I'll tell you this, if hopefully, you know, if they don't have any way for the bottom half of this statue to move, they're going to have a really hard time trying to recreate Beyonce because that's all she does is shake her tail. Back to the story. More than a visual wonder, visitors to the attraction will explore several fully immersive exhibits that feature state-of-the-art technologies, including augmented and virtual reality, robotics, and artificial intelligence. The exhibits are designed to be entertaining, educational, and engaging for all groups. Another feature of the giant is the viewing tower, where visitors can literally stand on the shoulders of of a giant and look out over the city from a dramatic vantage point. So we've got artificial intelligence. We have the ability to stand on the shoulders of the giants. Sounds to me like they're trying to desensitize us to what is coming. So you have to ask the question, will there be giant, will there be giants in the last days like the days of Noah? And I believe there may be. And this whole standing on the shoulders of the giant, that reminds me of Satan taking Jesus to the top of, I think it was a mountain, and showing him the kingdoms of the world and offering it to him. Kind of sounds like that as well. Let's keep reading. The attraction offers significant economic benefits to cities where it will be located, providing a diversity of jobs and attracting local and international tourist residents who increase footfall in the vicinity. Besides income from tickets, the giant provides several revenue-producing opportunities, including advertising and spectacular three-dimensional digital statue, giant selfies, where every visitor can be scanned and instantly displayed on the sculpture, creating the most awe-inspiring selfie in the world, special events and conferences and retail shops and restaurants. I mean, who would want to see themselves projected onto a giant? That's crazy. Additional revenue options include private events, brand celebrations, and message, message for birthdays, anniversaries, and wedding proposals. It is expected to draw approximately 500,000 visitor, visitors each year, generating annual revenues of around 12 million euros. Of course, they have to put the 12 in there, right? Each giant will cost 15 to 20 million euros to develop, depending on the location and size of the giant, which is a variable. The giant company, led by award-winning entrepreneur Patty Dunning, is now seeking partners and expressions of interest from international developers who want to attract hundreds of thousands of people to a particular location where footfall has been reduced by the current spam pandemic. Patty and the giant team are working with the award-winning innovative Berlin-based creative studio and architecture firm Dan Perlman to design the attraction. Now, this Patty guy, Patty Dunning, 
I think he was responsible for getting Michael Jackson to come to Ireland or some or Europe or something like that. So that's what he's known for, this developer and entrepreneur. Speaking about the launch of the giant, Dunning said, with patents in place, we are excited to unveil our plans. We already have interest from investors from Europe, Australia, Abu Dhabi, and cities across the U.S. The beauty of this attraction is that its exhibition can be tailored to individual cities and, and cultures, and the sculpture can be posed in a number of positions to suit the location. So, down here it talks about the spam demic, and basically they're saying that this will increase footfall or foot traffic in the face of the spamdemic. And what this tells me is that they're investing in the future of the spamdemic that will never end. So this statue is apparently spamdemic proof, so to speak, right? And they even have a giant movement, they call it. A social movement. Unbelievable. It involves sustainable living and climate action. And of course, these giant selfies. Which to me sounds like jumbo shrimp. Because if it's all about self and projecting yourself onto this giant, then how much do you really care about the world? People... Pretend to care about the world because it sounds sexy. It sounds like they're doing something. It's them on a street corner saying, I care about the world. This is the car I drive and I want everybody to know that I care about the world. But really they don't. Really they don't. It says here, the giant is spamdemic proof. Even in times of lockdown, customers can scan themselves using an iPad for a fee upload themselves to become a giant and share their giant selfie on social media. Visitors to the giant will receive a certificate and become part of the giant movement. So you get to become a giant. You get to become a Nephilim. And ongoing online engagement for the public giant will also present new dimensions in gastronomy and shopping. The team will work with leading chefs, artists, and vendors in each location to ensure that the dining retail experience is imaginative and of the highest level for its customers. The Giants Movement will lead the charge on promoting sustainable living and climate action along with funding programs for the homeless and other philanthropic endeavors. We know what philanthropy is. It's cover for these people to do bad things. So... This is what they're up to, you guys. There's also a 10,000 square foot exhibition space. Which will offer an absorbing journey into the world of giants from the realms of legend and mythology, of course. Notice they don't mention Jesus here. And it's a celebration of extraordinary men and women of the city and county. It's located in from its inventors, scientists and artists to leaders, athletes and game changers from the past to the present. The giant visitor attraction can be built as a temporary or permanent structure for cultural and commercial use. So, now, there are some individual local articles on this as well that I found that tell a little bit more to the story. This is from Phoenix, Arizona. And Arizona Central giant shape shifting statue. And that gives it away. That talks could be coming to Phoenix. This is dated May 6, 2021. So essentially, on the skin of this thing is what they call programmable features. Okay. So they're going to essentially project different popular figures onto the skin of this thing. Let's look at some of these images. The giant. There's Spider-Man. So, we've heard the word programmable before, have we not? My friend uh, Nicholson, 1968, talked 
all about programmable matter. Well, this giant is in effect a shapeshifter. They're telling you right there. Shapeshifting giants. And what I believe this is about is they're preparing us for blue beam or images projected into the sky that will deceive people into believing that they're seeing aliens or even the son of God himself. So that was pretty much all I had on the giants. Thanks you guys for staying on me about this because uh, this will be coming probably to a theater near you, right? Now, tomorrow, we're going to be decoding another part of Manifest. I put together this screenshot here. And the TV series, of course, is about a missing plane that gets lost in time. So here's a little sneak peek of what I'm working on. And thanks to the subscriber that told me to look at the back cover of the Jackson 5 album called Triumph. Here it is here. It contains the peacock, which of course appeared in manifest on this tarot card and gave them one of the clues to find their death date. And the whole journey of the show was to try to figure out how to avoid their death date. So here it is on the card. And look at this. Basically, the Jackson 5 album is the tarot card. See the clouds? See, see the see the uh, seventeen number seventeen star tarot card, and you look on here. It's got the clouds, and the stars, and then you've got the peacock and the pyramid. Well, look at the Jackson Five album. Let me pull up one that's not squeezed, because I squeezed it. It's got the clouds and the stars. This is a tarot card. This is the number seventeen tarot card. Unbelievable back cover of the Jackson Five album triumph here it is here and there you see in the iconography of the way the the word jackson is spelled with the o is the all-seeing eye with a pyramid here it is right here this is their 14th studio album came out in 1980 and i'll include this in tomorrow's deco but i wanted to give you guys a sneak peek here it is right here here's the most compelling evidence that they're looking to create a single race between the fallen ones and humanity. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but the two shall not cleave, is what it says in the book of Daniel. And look at this little blurb down here at the bottom of the back cover of the Triumph album of the Jackson 5. Through the ages, the peacock has been honored and praised for its attractive, illustrious beauty in all the bird family, the peacock is the only species that integrates all colors into one and displays this radiance of fire only when in love. We, like the peacock, try to integrate all races into one through the love and power of music. Signed, Michael Jackson for Peacock Productions. Unbelievable. And of course, this is a portal down here. The spiral portal. And the peacock also represents Lucifer, Azazel, as we revealed on yesterday's decode. So, this is the goal. To integrate all the races into one. And we know what they're talking about. It's not about the races they're talking about. This is a doozy. I miss this. On the tail fin of the manifest plane is the Vav Vav Vav, which is 666. It's the, the claws of the monster drink right there. So we'll cover all that tomorrow in detail. But I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek. Let's go back into the chat and see what you guys are up to. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. If you're new to the channel, we do these um, montages. We try to put those up every day, every couple days. Then we do a full show on it full 30 minutes or 40 minutes of the montage to break it down even further and get into detail so i may upload a montage like this afternoon or i just might wait till we do the full show in the morning now i'm into season three now so there'll probably be a couple more decodes on manifest 
We're on part three now. Part three will be tomorrow. We might do a part four. It all depends on how many episodes I get through today. Yes, the monster drink is symbol of 666, which seems to match right up with the tail fin of the manifest missing plane. And now we know what they mean. It's all about combining the races. And this was on the Jackson 5 Triumph album. Now we know what Triumph means as well. We know what Triumph means. All you got to do is take out the I and you get Trump. Casey, that's ridiculous. Well... His favorite film is Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko wears a Triumph t-shirt, which is the motorcycle. And so there's so much to this. This Triumph. What is Triumph? It's the Ark of Triumph. The Ark of Triumph. Which is a portal. These are portals to cities. Okay. Portals are time machines, basically. Arc of Triumph in Paris. There are there are these arcs of triumph everywhere. And then of course we saw the military class right here talking about portals under the Arc of Triumph. It says men have passed through these portals, and Mr. T becomes the tip of the spear. Casey, what, what are you talking about? There he is right there, the tip of the spear passing through the portal. Just like in Donnie Darko, it's like a spear coming out of your chest or like a an arrow coming out of your chest is what Donnie Darko said. And so what does that mean? This is the needle. This is the sticker. He made it. He was the first president to ever be able to make a sticker and which would now be forced on America and the world. That was his role, and he performed it. The tip of the spear, Apollo, Apollo's arrow. It's all there, you guys, if you have spiritual eyes to see. Now, we covered all that in previous videos. I'm just giving the new people a Cliff Notes version of everything that we'd covered. Yes, seven grains. He brought in Operation Warp Speed, which is warped seed. Or if you turn that upside down, it looks like draw deep, which was what you would do with the sticker. You would draw it in really deep, mixing the steel with watery clay, mixing the hypo needle with the watery clay of the flesh. And that's how the serpent will try to combine himself with the seed of men. Fortunately, the two will not cleave. No weapon shall prosper. So, let's go into the chat here. Yes, we've basically passed through a portal. A spiritual portal. The world has changed forever. There are so many people so afraid of this thing, they were willing to allow someone to put something in their body that basically we got to be careful what we say they allowed someone to put something in their body that's bad enough so all right tom we're about done here anyway so tom's got to go yes time travel warp speed it's 88 miles an hour which is back to the future biff it's all connected. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Be back here tomorrow with another decode on Manifest. Have a great day, everybody.